What is happening, everybody? On today's show, Arkansas headed back to the Elite Eight. Eric Musselman's bunch upset number one seed Gonzaga last night for the second straight year. They are headed back to the Elite Eight, representing for the SEC. They're the only team there. Uh, also, we're going to go around the conference as Nick Saban talks about who has impressed so far at Alabama spring practice, where Arch Manning is taking yet another visit at a monster series in SEC baseball this weekend, as well as some SEC Basketball transfer news locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. Well, they did it. The Arkansas Razorbacks got it done last night. When it happens, down they go to Tony. Going to end it with a dunk. You told us no one was giving this team a chance to come in here and beat Gonzaga. What did your team show you out here tonight? Uh, same thing all year. Right? Basically, Tracy is really great toughness. I mean, our defense to hold them to 68, incredible defense. We believed, you know, nobody else did. We read everything. I'm telling you, we put it up on our screen every single meal. Thank you to everybody that said we had no chance. I know you did, and you said you wanted these guys to have an outer body experience. Jalen Williams, J.T. Noche, the head of the snake. What could you say about their performance out here today? I'm just such great toughness. I mean, we're not always cosmetically pleasing offensively, but we win. Yeah, our lone SEC team is headed to the Elite Eight. The Arkansas Razorbacks beat the one seed Gonzaga Bulldogs 74-68. to Arkansas, I mean, I, I thought they played a great game overall, but first half it was close. They led 32-29 at the half. J.D. Note got a layup right before halftime. And J.D. note has been my guy all year. He led the way with 21 points, six rebounds, six assists, three steals, two blocks, he was incredible. Jalen Williams, the best charge taker since Shane Battier, by the way. Jalen became the new Arkansas leader for rebounds in a single season by a Razorback, surpassing the 350 mark. He surpassed Derek Hood, who set the record with 349 back in 1999. It was also Jalen Williams' sixth game this year with at least 15 points, 10 rebounds. He was a monster. Trey Wade. He hit some big shots all night, 6 for 10 shooting, 3 for 4 from 3. Tony played some stud defense all night. He had a big block late in the game. Overall, I just thought Arkansas's defense was elite. Their positioning was great. Always had a man on Gonzaga's guys driving to the rim. They closed their gaps in the ball screens and, of course, crashed the glass incessantly, pulling down so many rebounds. Now, I was surprised when I looked at the box score after the game. Gonzaga actually had... Uh, out-rebounded Arkansas 45-42, but it just felt like the Razorbacks had their hand on every one of them. The Zags, 15 turnovers on the night. Their big man, Chet Holmgren, he found fouled out late in the game, and it was basically all Drew Timmy. He did all he could, finished with 25 points, but Arkansas's defense made things so difficult on Mark Few's squad. It, it was a rebirth of the 40 minutes of hell. Unbelievable. And the Hogs looking ahead for... Uh, they were 0-10 against number one seeds in their history. You throw that stat out the window because they have now broken that. Um, on February 8th, Arkansas beat number one Auburn. On Thursday night, they beat number one Gonzaga. They are the first team all time to beat the AP number one team in the regular season and in the NCAA tournament in the same season. Pretty incredible stuff there. And how about Eric Musselman? Back in the Elite Eight for the second straight season, that is no easy feat. Of course, the last time the Razorbacks did that was in 94-95, but three years there, Muss has turned Arkansas back into one of the elite programs in all of college basketball, not just the SEC. 
Got to give a shout out to A.D. Hunter Juracek and all of the Arkansas Athletic Department. What a run they have had across so many of their sports. Uh, just an incredible night. Look, there was a lot of people complaining about uh, the refs being terrible, and they were. But look, anybody who wants to complain about Jalen Williams taking those charges, he's been doing that all season. Ask anybody from around the SEC. We've been watching him. If you have a team that played to Arkansas and lost to them and Jalen Williams was falling backward, taking those charges, that's what he's done. And they have called it all year long. So some Gonzaga fans were not happy about those, but it's part of this Arkansas team, this makeup. But as I have always said, it is as J.D. Note goes, so go the Razorbacks. And so go the Razorbacks on to the Elite Eight. Now, a little disclosure here. We're recording this. We don't have a final yet from Texas Tech Duke. So next up for the Hogs, they get the winner of Texas Tech Duke on Saturday. Of course, this is where the road ended for the Razorbacks just a year ago. Losing to Baylor. They put up a really good fight against them. Can they get over the hump here and get to a final four? It will be outstanding uh, if they're able to do that. But again, the lone SEC team coming into this weekend stays alive. Congrats to the Arkansas Razorbacks. And by the way, a quick shout out to our buddy John Neighbors, who joined us on the podcast earlier in the week, previewing this game. He's been out in San Francisco covering the Hogs. Take a listen to Locked on Razorbacks if you get a chance. He'll have more on this uh, win for the Hogs and a whole lot more, man. Let's see if they can keep this thing going and advance yet another weekend. Thanks again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to go around the conference with some football notes, also some basketball notes as well. We'll get to all that in just a second. Uh, but first, I need to remind you about our friends over at Built Bar. This is the time of year that a lot of you have given up on your New Year's resolutions. You need to go check out our friends at Built Bar. They have got low-calorie, high-protein, uh, 130-calorie bars, 4 grams sugar, 4 grams net carbs, 17 grams of protein packed in there. It is healthier than a candy bar. It is the type of thing if you're leaving the gym and you need a protein bar, stuff it in your gym bag, whatever, grab a Built Bar. It is such a healthier alternative than some of the junk food that they have out there that I know you're eating in the afternoons waiting to get off of work or whatever. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. There are tons of different flavors to choose from. You can go check them all out on their website at built.com. Use our promo code LOCKED15 when you check out. That will get you 15% off your order. Again, use the code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off over at built.com. Built Bar. They are all about taste. They are delicious. Check them out. <laughs> Roll along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys again making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. A little bit of a different format today since we had to start with uh, Arkansas advancing to the Elite Eight. But let's just jump into it. Let's go around the conference with some football news. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch. Around the conference. Alabama and Nick Saban putting on the pads this week for the first time, starting up their 15 practice spring session. Nick Saban talking with the media and highlighting a couple of guys he said has stood out so far. One of those, a transfer in running back Jameer Gibbs coming in from Georgia Tech. Looking like he's a guy who could take over that workhorse role at running back for the Tide. Nick Saban said, look, he's been a good addition to our team. He's got great speed. He's a good receiver, good third down back, great vision. He's got a really good burst out of his cut. He said, I'm really, really impressed with what he's been able to do so far. He's smart. He's picking things up fast. An experienced player does a good job of understanding what we're trying to do and how we're doing it, and that's what experienced players do. He's done a really, really good job. That's a great compliment. You know, you don't normally get that kind of praise from Nick Saban being a player who just got to the program. Another guy that Nick Saban pointed to, of course, having that experience is Eli Ricks, the stud defensive back coming in from LSU. He said he's done a good job so far, coming off a of shoulder surgery, missed half the season last year. Said he wasn't able to do anything for a long time. So when he got here in our offseason program, that was the first thing he's done in a long time. He lost some weight. He's trying to gain it back. An experienced player who understands how to play the game 
picking up things, doing a good job out there. So Eli Ricks looking to be the number one DB for Bama this year. Also, one other guy at Nick, uh, Nick Saban pointed out, Kendrick Law, one of their freshman early enrollees. He was a former top 100 prospect. Saban said he's a guy that could play multiple positions if that creates value. But he's done a really good job at receiver. He's got some speed, got some size, runs good routes, has good hands. So Kendrick Law, maybe a name to keep an eye on for the Tide as a freshman this year. Now, speaking of the Tide, there's a recruit that they would like to get in, and that is Arch Manning. Arch Manning has reportedly made plans for yet another visit to Tuscaloosa. He will be on Alabama's campus the first weekend of April. That's from 24-7 Sports. Alabama, Georgia, and Texas are seemingly the three top contenders for Arch Manning. He visited Alabama last summer, then went back in the fall for the Tide's home game against Ole Miss. Five-star quarterback, of course, made a uh, return trip to Athens to visit Kirby Smart in Georgia. Set to visit visit Texas this week. We will see where he ends up, of course. Ole Miss legacy, that Manning name all across the SEC. We know what that means. 24-7 sports. Uh, you know, did report a few weeks ago, Florida and LSU with their coaching changes. They were back in there. Uh, but earlier this year, Arch did remove Clemson from his top list of teams. So he will presumably check out Alabama spring practice. Coming up the first weekend of April, the annual 8 day spring game, by the way, set for April 16th. That'll be after Arch Manning's visit. Well, news over at Vanderbilt, Clark Lee staff, they've added an experienced defensive lineman from the FCS ranks through the transfer portal. Former Cal Poly defender Miles Cecil announced he is headed to Vanderbilt, taking advantage of the NCAA waiver for the COVID-impacted season. Started at Cal Poly back in 2017, redshirted his first year on campus, played in 36 games, made 31 starts last four seasons. Uh, the Mustangs' 2020 season was limited to just three games uh, played in the spring of 2021. In his career, Cecil's recorded 100, 126 tackles, five and a half sacks, and last year posted career highs of 43 tackles and two sacks. So we'll see what he can do for the Vanderbilt defense. The SEC office picking up a new hire in David Cutcliffe, who recently stepped down as Duke's head coach. He's reportedly joining the SEC. Cutcliffe coached at Duke for 15 seasons. The school announced a mutual parting of ways back in November. Of course, Cutcliffe may be remembered for turning Duke into a somewhat respectable football program, getting the bowl games and all that. Overall, Duke won 77 games in his 14 seasons there, including six bowl appearances. Uh, Cutcliffe's going to reportedly work as a special assistant to the commissioner in a football relations role, according to Chris Lowe and Adam Rittenberg of ESPN, before Duke Cutcliffe, of course, best known being the Ole Miss coach and a Tennessee offensive coordinator where he ran offenses led by both Peyton and Eli Manning at the college level. So best of luck to David Cutcliffe. Got the NFL draft coming up very soon and different teams holding their pro days. Matt Corral flinging it around at Ole Miss's pro day earlier this week. And Chris Sims singing his praises. The NBC Sports analyst was on the Dan Patrick show and talking about why Matt Corral has impressed him. He said he has three things that he does at an elite level. The NFL is going to look at it and go, that is special. First off, his arm is extremely strong. Sick Corral also has the quickest release of any quarterback for several years. His ability to pop around the pocket, get his feet situated, and make a throw is phenomenal. Asked if Corral is a top 10 pick. Sim said, look, if Tua is the number five pick, then yeah, Corral is a top 10 pick. No doubt about it. So we will see where Matt Corral ends up going in the draft in a couple of weeks. Get back to... Around the conference in just a second as uh, we will give you some news on a big baseball series happening this weekend and some uh, SEC basketball news as well. We'll get to that in just a second. Need to tell you about one of our new friends, Athletic Greens. We just started taking these, and I'm telling you, if you want better gut health, if you want more energy, optimized immune system, you need to try it out. What is this stuff? Well, basically with one Delicious scoop of Athletic Greens. You are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, 
whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients supporting your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of those things. You need to go check them out right now. And the best part about it is it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health. It's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. So right now, time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Uh, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash college. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Go check them out. Of course, that time of year again, college basketball's tournament continuing on this weekend. And for all the latest odds, contests, player props, betonline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news throughout the year. And, of course, not just basketball. They got you uh, covered with everything else. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering informational needs, including live betting, your favorite Vegas casino games. Head on over to their website today. You can do so on your mobile device. Learn all about the trends in action. I was just on there checking out. Uh, they got an article up on the uh, the Masters and some of the picks that you might want to get in on on that. Bet online, it is where the game starts. Please go take a look at them. And again, uh, all the odds for the rest of the tournament games happening this weekend as well. BetOnline.net. Continue on here at Locked On SEC. Again, thank you for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Let's continue on with our uh, round the conference because we've still got plenty we have to discuss here, um, particularly with baseball, and we'll jump right into it. A big, a monster SEC baseball series taking place this weekend, and Lane Kiffin is heading there to Swayze Field, for this weekend's Ole Miss Tennessee baseball series, Ole Miss baseball announced Lane Kiffin's going to throw out the first pitch for Friday's series opener. Both teams come into this weekend with number one rankings, depending on what poll you're looking at. Ole Miss, they rank number one in the Baseball America poll D, uh, and D1 baseball poll. Tennessee, they're ranked number one by perfect game, giving the program its first number one ranking in any poll. Tennessee, they are atop the SEC East standings with a record of 20 and one, 21 overall, 3 and 0 in SEC play. Ole Miss, meanwhile, 16 and 4 overall. Arkansas leads the SEC West with a 3 and 0 record in conference play. Uh, the Rebels in Texas A&M are tied for second with a conference record of 2 and 1. Again, we just started SEC play last weekend, but Friday night's game is set for 6:30 Central. We'll stream on SEC Network Plus. Projected starters, Ole Miss's John Gaddis, who's 2-0 with a 278 ERA, going against Tennessee's Chase Burns, who's 4-0 with a .67 ERA. And by the way, some good news this week is sounds like some of Tennessee's banged-up pitchers who've been out getting healthier, and they will get some reinforcements very soon. So that is going to be a heck of a series. I will definitely be streaming those games this weekend on the ESPN app, but uh, best of luck to Ole Miss at Tennessee, and best of luck to Lane Kiffin throwing out the first pitch. Get it over the uh, plate there, Lane. In some SEC basketball news, again, other news happening outside of just Arkansas going to the lead Eight. Rick Barnes, of course, led Tennessee to the SEC Tournament Championship earlier this month, and Athletic Director Danny White rewarding him for his successful year uh, Danny White announced a contract extension for Rick Barnes. His contract now runs through 2026-2027 after he led the Vols to four straight NCAA tournament appearances. And that SEC tournament title, of course, was just the fifth in program history. First one since 1979. Led the Vols to some great feats, including uh, spending the entire season ranked in the AP Top 25. They're ranked number five in the postseason poll. Tennessee also never lost back-to-back -back games this past season. It's the second season that's happened under Rick Barnes. In program history, Tennessee has 
six seasons of 26 or more wins. And Barnes has been the Vols head coach for three of those six. So he has done a fantastic job. Uh, really got to give him credit. And as Danny White said, Rick has built an incredible culture within our basketball program and has spread throughout Vol Nation. I've had a blast watching the best fan base in the country embrace this team and create an electric atmosphere. Coach Barnes' leadership is steady, and the players exude high character. So congrats to Rick Barnes. Not going anywhere for a while there in Knoxville. Some other SEC hoops news. Lamont Paris officially has been hired at South Carolina. Board of Trustees approved his five-year contract to coach the Gamecocks men's basketball team. His contract is $12 million. He will make $2.2 million his first year and average $2.4 million over the length of the deal. Comes over from Chattanooga, where he's been since 2017. The Mocs made the NCAA tournament but lost in the first round. They went 27-8 and eight this past year. He's 47 years old. He's the first African-American head coach to lead the Gamecocks. They, the school announced in a news release. In his five seasons, he led the Mocs to an 87-72 and 72 overall record, including 65-29 and 29 in the last three seasons. So, again, capping off all the hires for the uh, all the SEC vacancies, a lot of mid-major guys, a lot of guys who are doing well at some of the smaller schools, but now getting to be on the big stage, like uh, Golden at uh, Florida, McMahon at LSU, um, all the new hires we have across the SEC, a lot of the mid-major guys getting to be on the big stage for the first time. We'll see how they do. Some movement around the SEC basketball world. Dante Allen announced on Thursday he is headed into the transfer portal. He's a kid from Kentucky, played for Big Blue Nation, shared his appreciation for Kentucky on social media, said his last three years have been special there. He's six foot six. Uh, he's a forward out of uh, Kentucky, averaged 2.2 points and 1.2 rebounds this season after he averaged over five points a game his freshman season. So he is entering the transfer portal. We'll see where Dante Allen ends up. Also, another guy over at Auburn, Devin Cambridge. He's one of their uh, rotational players this past season. The junior guard slash forward. Uh, great dunker. Makes a lot of highlight reels. He is in the transfer portal. He announced, first and foremost, I'd like to thank Bruce Pearl, the coaching staff, for giving me an opportunity of a lifetime. I'd like to thank my Auburn family. So no matter how, how hard it may be for me to leave everything we've created together, things have to end for a new beginning to form. With that said, I'll be entering the transfer portal. And one more guy after a season at LSU coming over from Missouri. Xavier Pinson is on the move again. Billy M. Body of All Three Sports announcing Pinson has entered his name into the transfer portal. He will be a, a graduate transfer in his lone season at LSU, played in 27 games, averaged 28 minutes, just under uh, 10 points a game, 4.8 assists. Missed time in the middle of the year with an MCL sprain in his right knee after LSU got off to a 14 and 1 start. And when he went out, LSU's offense was not the same. So. Pinson will be highly sought after. He did not rule out a return to LSU either, so that could still happen as well. And then a day after Vanderbilt fell in the NIT to Xavier, the Commodores learned that guard Max Adelman is entering the transfer portal. He appeared four games for the Commodores this past season. There you have it. That is the latest news from around the conference. A lot going on in uh, all aspects, baseball, basketball, Football spring practice, and we'll have plenty more information as all these spring practices get up and running here over these next couple of days. So all next week, keep an eye out. We'll bring you a lot of the news from around the conference when it comes to spring practice. Of course, we'll see if the Arkansas Razorbacks can get to the Final Four with uh, a win in the Elite Eight potentially on Saturday. So we'll uh, recap all that for you coming up next week. You guys have a fantastic weekend. I'm Chris Gordy. Quick reminder, thanks again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. You can go make your second listen. Check out the Locked on NFL Draft podcast. Ryan Tracy and Eric Crocker bringing the NFL Draft to life with inside analysis on college football prospects and front the NFL front offices. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordon. Talk to you guys on Monday.